what areas of Wisconsin are you located? We have a heavy concentration in the Fox Cities, so Appleton, Nina, um, Oshkosh, New London. Uh, we also have facilities in the southwestern part of the state, Lancaster, and um, uh, Boscobel. Boscobel, yeah, that's the one. And then we also have a, a manufacturing site in Madison. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, next, uh, Jesse, if you could introduce yourself, please. Hi there, I'm Jesse Bannock, also work for Amcor. I work in the uh, product development team uh, in Blown Film. So not here quite as many years as, as Kevin, but I've been with him for about three years. Okay, and uh, Jake? Yep, uh, similar in the product development side of R&D. I particularly focus on meat packaging. I've been here for about five years and I actually did co-op. Um, it was Bemis at the time uh, prior to coming on full-time. Great, thanks. And Matt. Hi, I'm Matt Beats. I'm, I'm not for Amcor. I'm uh, with PPG. Been there about uh, three years now. I'm the uh, plant operations manager. Uh, we've got about 50,000 strong worldwide. We're, my plant's at uh, Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Uh, we're the biggest paint plant in the United States uh -oh. uh, for PPG. Okay, thanks. Um, so let's see here. Um, let me ask um, the folks from uh, Amcor, I think a couple of you touched on this a little bit, but what type of internships does your organization have? Anybody? Sure, I can comment and Jesse and Kevin, please add to it. Um, we primarily look for co-ops, so that's uh, eight month period. Um, usually that's stems from either January to August or from what we call the spring session or June to December, what we call the fall session. And that would be in positions of research and development as well as in our manufacturing side, such as a process engineering or what we call project engineering position. Um, there are also some internships available within maybe some of the more remote um, manufacturing facilities, as well as we have a rigids group um, out of Michigan that seems to lean more on internships opportunities for that group. And those would be the three months during the summer. And often, oftentimes the internships um, are follow-ups to co-ops. So if you are a co-op for eight months, you go back to school for a semester and then summer rolls around, uh, oftentimes uh, those folks will follow up with just a summer only internship. Okay, Matt, can you tell us a little bit about PPG? Absolutely, so we've got internships, uh, materials, um, operations, we do chemical engineering, uh, we do chemistry um, for chem chem people that want to be chemists when they get older. So we do like uh, for the more of the technical side, uh, we do mechanical engineering, uh, industrial engineering. Um, we've got a lot of, a lot of different options uh, in our program. Um, it's actually based out of uh, Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh places people. So you, one, one year you'll do an internship at my site and maybe the next year you could end up something with uh, maybe in Cleveland or um, in Texas or something like that. Um, it's usually a summer term. So we do them during the summer times um, and you usually kind of, it's good, good for networking too. So you usually place with a bunch of other interns with different backgrounds and then it's kind of a rotational uh, program as well. Uh, where the intern will be in one aspect of the business for a little while. And then just to give them a, a different, different variety, we, we put them in something else as well. Great, thanks. 
Um, let's take a step back and have um, some of our students, other participants, if you'd like to come on camera and introduce yourself real quick. Tell us about um, where, what school you're at, maybe what your major is, and what year you plan to graduate. Anybody? Um, I'm Doug Newhouse, and I am a student at UWO, and I'm a physics major with an astronomy minor, and I'm thinking about going with a computer science minor. Um, I plan on graduating probably 2024, 2025. Okay, thanks, Doug. Anyone else? All right, well, that's okay if you don't feel comfortable coming on camera and introducing yourselves. Does anybody want to come off mute and ask a question of our panelists? So um, as a physics major, what kind of internships would you guys have available? Within, at least within the AMCOR world, we typically uh, uh, heavily recruit uh, more in the uh, engineering uh, world, um, particularly chemical engineers, but also mechanical, electrical, uh, a bit of industrial, sometimes uh, material science and engineering folks, um, chemists to some degree uh, as well. Um, so I can't think of any strictly physics uh, uh, major type backgrounds that, that we've had. But uh, one thing that I know that oftentimes happens is, you know, once you get started, uh, particularly in industry, the, the strict um, education uh, area that you have, physics, for example, becomes less and less important and experience takes over more and more. And you'll find a wide variety of degrees in areas that you probably wouldn't expect simply because of interest and um, just what, uh, whatever their, your career path um, might take you. So you're, all, the, all the work you're going through to get ready to uh, join industry isn't necessarily going to be directly applicable, but you're sure going to learn how to problem solve and learn how to learn how to learn. And that'll, uh, that's really the, the big value that that industry will see in in your educational background. Thanks. I think from the PPG side, we would, we'd probably slot you into something more um, for engineering. Um, I, my last uh, engineering uh, leader that we had, manager, he had a physics degree and, and uh, he's kind of pushed his career through the engineering path. So I think that'd probably be a good fit for you just from the analytical side. I think also an option for you too would be to get into supply chain and just uh, with all the analytics and data movement that they have there, I think that could be a good, um, good place to start with the manufacturing side. Um, and without getting into any chemistry and stuff like that. Okay, thanks. Um, any other questions from our participants? All right, I'll throw another one out there. Um, what is the best way for students to find out about internships? Um, where do you advertise? Do you work with um, career services on campuses, your website? Um, where would be the best place to find that kind of information? So our, our company website at ppg.com uh, actually has the internship program uh, listed on there and you'd apply uh, through there. Uh, um, our, our leader for, um, for the And goes into you know um, 
you know, different aspects of that to start recruiting, you know, young, young adults to try to get into our program. Um, because once, you know, once we invest, usually when you start our program, it's a four year program. And then by the end, we're looking to try to place you into a, into a position uh, with us. And then we also have pro, uh, a program for if you decide to go into your graduate degree, um, that you can uh, pursue that as well and, and do internships on, at that level uh, to set you up for a, a management position as well. Great, thanks. How about AMCOR? I would agree with that, that you can find a lot on our website. Um, especially I believe it's amcor.com slash careers kind of leads you right into the career portal. We do heavily connect with campuses that we recruit at as well. Within Wisconsin area, I know Kevin you help out with a lot of recruitment at UW-Madison for um, you know, our engineers that we bring on. We also have uh, usually connect with um, UW-Platteville for some more focused on electrical engineers or mechanical engineers, um, as well as a little bit at UWL. Thanks. Um, and then what is the timing to apply for these positions? I guess, um, like what year in school and then what time of year? Um, I, I think you talked a little bit about when the co-op positions run and when this, the summer positions run, but can you talk a little bit more about the timing of, a plan, of that application process? Um, Your first year is ideal for us. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Uh, I was just going to say, I think for most of ours, and Kevin, feel free to add, we, we tend to target um, some of the older students just that have some of those core, you know, curriculum under their belt with uh, the degree that they're pursuing. So we tend to look at um, juniors is probably most prevalent. Also, some that are in their senior year looking for more experience. Um, however, we do, you know, have some sophomores that we apply and see as very strong candidates that we we bring on as interns or co-ops. And usually those positions tend to, I think, open up around the career fair time, you know, maybe a couple weeks before or something like that. So pretty prevalent in early fall or early spring for those ones. Yeah. I think because we tend to be co-op heavy um, as opposed to interns, the uh, being a little bit Older having, especially the kind of the platform courses out of the way makes it a little easier to fit into a schedule and be able to plan uh, a little bit better as far as mapping out graduation time and that sort of thing. Great. And uh, Matt, what, what did you want to add about PPG? Forget the first. Uh, first few years ideally because they want to you know we, we like to get you through a few years of the program uh, and try different sites uh, so you get more well-rounded different aspects of the business we don't just target you for one area and keep you there the entire time try to like try to keep people more well-rounded before they get into their field and then um, if you do join later uh, which is fine it's it's not an, it's not a problem um, we, we do look for people uh, junior year or less. Uh, so I think we stay away from anybody that's uh, a, a senior in college at this point. Okay, interesting. So kind of opposite situations there. Um, okay, let's see. What types of responsibilities would an intern have? Um, at your company? What kinds of things would they be doing while they're there? And maybe what's the schedule like? Um, so for me at PPG, I have uh, four interns right now and all of them, I put them directly into a engineering role. So I give them full responsibility of an area and uh, improving processes right away with a mentor overseeing them. Um, to develop them into managers as well. So uh, it's what I like to do with my interns is really uh, get them the, 
as much experience as I can and kind of hit them with the fire hose so that they know when they're in class moving forward that they there's other things they need to learn and there's things that they can pick up along the way that'll help them transition uh, better later on. Um, so we give them a lot of responsibility. Their hours are typically Monday through Friday, um, first shift. So we do seven, seven to three thirty. Um, there's a couple of days where we keep them over to, or, or coming in early to uh, link up with the other shifts to understand, um, you know, uh, what's going on there. And, and if they're improving some kind of project or process for the summer, um, they'll have to come in early or stay late to, um, to review that with the other shifts as well. Amcor is same, very much the same format. Um, we treat uh, co-ops interns like uh, same same as entry level engineer employees. So you have responsibility to plan projects. Um, we'll have them with the help of a mentor. You also you know have have that responsibility then to. Kind of seek out help because you're going to definitely need help right uh, we all do when we're doing something new and different and that can be you know a good learning experience you come up with strategies that work best for you as a person and you know, that that fits your personality um, jake you were you know went through this uh, not that long ago but i don't know i you might want to just talk about yeah you know, how how i think you, the expectations were for you to contribute just like a, a full-time employee would contribute, but with a little, little help on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. So um, during my co-op experience, it was exactly that. It was exactly that. And since coming on full-time, that's been the way that I've mentored co-ops is they, they work on projects that full-time engineers would work on. Um, so you're kind of thrown in and particularly in our research and development role, as Kevin alluded to, you're directly responsible for it and connecting with manufacturing and sometimes with external customers and leading this project through, um, you know, to the end goal. I think as far as the hours go, they're pretty similar where it's um, kind of a 48 hours a week, seven to four, eight to five sort of schedule. Uh, similarly, we are a 24-7 manufacturing environment, so you might have to work some odd hours every once in a while, but, you know, I think we have a pretty good culture to, you know, make up for that and let, we're not going to force you to come in that day if you're working overnight at the plant or something like that. Great, thank you. Um, How could students um, leverage the experience that they get as in a co-op or an internship? Um, what kind of takeaways, skills, and knowledge would they be able to apply for their future job search? From my opinion, I think it's one getting a, I mean, first just knowledge of the real world and how an actual engineering position um operates and functions when you're trying to get problems done i think one of the biggest skills that you know has been touched on is communication and building that communication cross-functionally throughout whatever department you're working in um you know for your position as well as showing that you can lead a project and drive that through to completion during your uh, co-op or internship time I think, I think another another thing that is really beneficial and when I was in school co-ops weren't invented yet so I don't have personal experience here but I think you develop a lot of self-confidence and I think you also start seeing how the stuff that you're going through in school connects with the real world how how there is actual methodology and, and meaning to those classes that you're taking you'll see those connections and see why they're critical, why they're important, 
And that isn't always so obvious until you get some practical experience and, and see where those connections are, are made. That's true. Uh, Matt, did you have anything to add to that question? Uh, yeah, so I, I agree with the um, with what you were saying about the um, you know connecting uh -oh. the to the real world. That's that's probably the biggest piece is the experience, right? So you want you want to. All right, I'm getting a message that we have about five minutes left, and I'm sorry, uh, Matt. You want to gain oh. that experience? I think that's what businesses are looking for when you're, that you can reference back on. Okay, thank you. Um, we have about five minutes. Um, are there any questions from the group? Otherwise, I have one more. I think we have time for one more from anybody. Okay, then I'll just ask um, about the application process. Um, I, I kind of asked about where you can find out about internships and what they might involve. Let's kind of go in between there and, and tell us about um, what do you have to do to, you know, is there an interview process? What kind of, how could you prepare for an interview for an internship or co-op at your, at your company? So uh, typically with our process, if you go through applying online or seeking us out on campus, there's going to be um, at least a, most likely one, maybe a maximum of two interviews that would occur through that. Usually they're um, short questions where you would have a discussion with an HR representative um, or someone from you know, the engineering side. Um, to talk through some of those questions, just get to know you. I think the best way to prepare for it is to, I mean, you can look up example interview questions and do practicing, practicing those on your own. And then really just taking, uh, getting a good summary of your accomplishments or leadership positions that you guys have been a part of through school and other things that you've participated in. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a specific engineering experience to be a critical experience that we would look at. So being a part of groups or taking those sorts of leadership positions um, are really beneficial. And if you really want to stand out, it's, it's good for you to have some questions prepared that are really relevant to the, the company with whom you're talking right. and to try to understand how, you know, to get, convey the message, how you think you would benefit how you would learn, because we understand uh, co-ops and internships are learning experiences for you. So we're investing in that, you know, to, to help you guys out. But, you know, try to convey that message. And, you know, you, if you have good questions and you can see, you know, try to get the point across how you will benefit, how you will fit with that particular role, I think that'll be a good different differentiator for you, make you memorable to the folks when they when everyone gets together to talk about it after a while when we decide who to invite and who not to so for us uh if you're on campus and we're meeting with you your resume set up and um so um, but we're really, really looking for um, and, and the questions uh, that we're looking for, for you can you can probably find a line like the other gentleman on this call so what you want to get into and what uh, what's your goals you know, what's your goals with having an internship and, um, and, and uh, you know, where do you see yourself in the next, you know, three to five years, you know, uh, through college and after college, so we can try to place you in a good fit. 
Great. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> um, okay. Well, I think we just have a couple more minutes. Do we have any other questions or anything else that the panelists would like to add that maybe I didn't cover that you think would be important for our students to know? I think, yeah, the, one of the best things you can do is do a little preparation work, understand a little bit about the company with whom you're, sure. you're doing. It's very easy nowadays. It's not like the olden days where you had to go to a placement office and find a shoebox that had company information in it, right? Everyone's got access uh, nowadays. So do a little studying ahead. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you know, if you look like you know a little bit about the role in which you're going the role in which uh, you're applying and the company uh, you're gonna gonna look like you care right and and that that aspect it, it's pretty surprising sometimes how how you'll sit down in an interview and the, the person you're talking with will have no idea you know who, who we are as a company and you know that that part is is pretty important so Make sure you do that at, in the minimum. Thanks, Kevin. I think that's good advice. I got the list of people I'd be working with today just shortly before the meeting started, and I was able to go to both websites and find out a little bit about your companies. Um, I know Amcor makes packaging. Um, they even had lists of all the kind of different shapes and types of packaging that you guys manufacture. And then I know uh, PPG does a lot with uh, coatings and paints and that sort of thing. So it's, it's all out there, like you said. Okay, well, we have 23 seconds left. I want to say thanks to our panelists and for the rest of you for joining us. And I hope that you gain some useful information. <laughs>